Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing uh, well. Uh, unfortunately, I had no time for a video yesterday. I had some errands to do, Seriously, and I had to do some. After just turn this guy off. Five percent. I had some errands to run that I had to drive into Brooklyn. I had to do something for my mom. Caught up with some old friends. So apologize. There was no uh, video last night. So I figured do one uh, today. All right. So l let me know if you heard this before. The market is very strong. Right, that that literally could be uh, the the start and the end of the video, uh, pretty much every single night. Uh, no matter what happens, the market keep, continues to get bid up. But we have actually a line in the sand here. We'll get kind of get to that in a second, uh, where the euphoria might kind of end and reality, or maybe even gravity, uh, to kick in. You know, two days ago, or uh, actually yesterday, uh, Texas Instruments uh, came out with earnings, um, and again, you would figure, uh, uh, you know, you'd figure a semiconductor. Uh, is going to bring everything down after missing earnings. Not so much, right? You have the same usual suspects. You have NVIDIA just going completely parabolic. Uh, AMD continue goes to goes nuts. Uh, you have Clack, right? You have Clack, you have LR, uh, LRCX. I mean, just everything going nuts. Avago, everything in that space is just an, on an absolute tear. But eventually, just like everything else, eventually stocks get tired. We'll get to uh, the meaningful areas, potential meaningful areas in the next couple of days uh, in a minute. So yesterday came out Tesla's earnings, right? And Tesla, if you've been following along uh, for the last, you know, even for the last month or so, you know what happened to Tesla, right? It lost the 50-day moving average. Automatically, that becomes a, a huge seg uh, sell signal. It lost the 200-day moving average, right? That becomes a super-duper strong signal. The problem was... This was the first time I have saw what I didn't see uh, was the options market betting into earnings uh, in out-of-the-money puts. And I said, well, this could be a scenario of, well, maybe it's already all baked in, maybe all the bad news, whether, whether it's the, the price cuts, uh, the, the giga plants on hold or shut down, all that case would be. Well, maybe it's just if they don't say anything silly, if they don't say anything uh, so egregious, maybe the stock could actually rally. Yeah, that didn't happen, right? That didn't happen at all. Uh, if you look at uh, Tesla's earnings last night, they pretty much disappointed on every single metric, including their margins. Even the margins uh, did not come in uh, as 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 well expected. And for that, you know, stock is down uh, 25 points today. A uh, pretty aggressive move down. You have a 12% move down uh, in the stock, uh, and all those repeat buyers, and and that's a. And that's one of those things that people talk about all the time. Somebody knows something. Somebody definitely knows something. There was a guy before earnings. If you guys remember the, the video from two nights ago, there was a guy before earnings. He bought 150,000 shares at 210. We, you know, we kept on talking about that repeat buyer, repeat buyer. And it really does show you, you know, you could physically have the report in your hands. And I, I've been saying this for years. Nobody's going to know. Nobody knows how the market's going to react. And the market has spoken uh, Tesla right now is literally down about what 25, 25 percent or so uh, so far in 2014, and now because the catalyst is out of the way, unless Elon Musk, uh, after the quiet uh, quiet period or, or blockout period, uh, then he could start accumulating stock and maybe get back to that 25 percent he was talking about. Not a lot of faith right now, right? Not a lot of faith, not a lot of optimism uh, going into uh, the remainder of the quarter and the stock. Uh, is it possible the stock has a dead cat bounce tomorrow? Sure. I mean, the stock was down 12% uh, today, but at least today's lows are definitely the line in the sand uh, going into uh, for the future, right? Whether it's tomorrow, uh, whether it's um, at some point this week or next week, today's low is going to be a very, very important line in the sand uh, for more downside. And the wonderful thing about trading is, you know, your opinion, my opinion, everybody's opinion doesn't mean anything, okay? Once you have price action confirm ranges, whether it's at the top of the range and the bottom of the range, that speaks the loudest. And no matter how much of a perma bull or bear you are, if you're wrong price-wise, you're wrong price-wise. And that's one of those things that you don't have to argue with uh, complete strangers. It's either going to go up or down, and price action is a big thing. 
And, you know, it lost this 206 level. It lost this 194 level we've been talking about uh, for a few weeks. And now we're just kind of in no man's land. And again, unless something really, really good that captures uh, the investor's heart uh, comes out in the next couple of weeks, you should see lower prices uh, in the next few weeks. Again, tomorrow could, could definitely dead, get dead cat balance, but I have no interest playing the dead cat balance. I'd rather short it into supply for a move back down. And I'm definitely watching uh, for more selling uh, on the lows. This this afternoon, right? You had two er big earnings today. You had Visa. Okay, you had Visa come out with earnings, uh, getting hit after the close. Uh, you have Intel coming out with earnings, uh, getting hit after the close as well. It's recovering a little bit. And again, this is a semiconductor. This is a, a second uh, semiconductor who's now disappointed earnings back-to-back -back days versus Texas. Now it's Intel. And if this was on 1999 or 2000, the NASDAQ would be down lock limit because Intel, Microsoft, and Oracle, and Cisco, uh, they were the big leaders uh, during that time. Now it's just another semiconductors. But again, if you look at the semis after this massive run-up, you know, what's NVIDIA down? A couple of bucks after the close, right? Uh, you, have, uh, you have AMD, you know, you have AMD flat. Uh, so very, very impressive, uh, the staying power uh, for these bulls again, can they can they you know can they uh, survive another haymaker for another earnings disappointment uh, in their group? You know, we'll see. You know, we'll see tomorrow again. There's a lot of charts uh, that look uh, really really good for tomorrow, uh, but at least now we have the potential to at least to watch for a potential rug pull. And again, a rug pull could come at any time, especially at euphoric levels. But at least what we saw today is exactly what we've been talking about now for a couple of weeks. You might not get a rug pull today. You might not get a rug pull next week. But the one area of interest is always the five-day moving average. And you can see here, the last several times it's hit the five-day, that's this orange line, the Qs have bounced, the Qs have bounced. So today's lows, that's the line in the sand, right? That is the five-day moving average. So if we start losing, and guys, write this down. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to happen tomorrow. But this is something that you should really pay attention to in case that level snaps. Stocks will come in. Again, gravity is real. No matter how strong the market is, I've traded the most euphoric markets. And even some of you guys who traded 2020, 2021, you know how euphoric, how euphoric it is. 2023 was completely euphoric. But we all know during that time span, if there is a breach of the previous day's channel, especially the five-day moving average, you could get a very, very aggressive pull. And the market could still be in a very, very healthy space. So right down this level, guys, the Qs uh, for the rest of this week, uh, 424 is the line in the sand, just in case uh, the buyers get tired. We know uh, the area in the sand that we need to pay attention to for a potential pull. So on the Qs, it is uh, 424. On the Spies, it is it stopped right at the same area, back-to-back -back days. Uh, the Spies need to lose... You know, 480, 480s, right? 480, 480s, that would con confirm uh, the five-day moving average, at least give it a little bit of a br breather uh, to the bulls for a potential back test. Uh, everything else, there's no reason, re reason even to look at. Uh, IWM, I really don't pay attention to that index, but uh, IWM 194 is held now three, four times. Any close below 194, uh, the speculation money will get uh, pulled as well. But the remainder of the stocks, you know, they still continue to be uh, very, very strong. You know, today was definitely a session that if you you didn't need to chase NVIDIA, you didn't need to chase uh, AMD, you didn't need to chase the, the really, really crazy stocks because in this type of environment, the second and third tier stocks, they're all waking up. And let me give you guys a couple of examples uh, what we saw today. So we started the day, uh, we were watching Micron. Uh, Micron uh, 90 needs to build. It stopped right at 90 again. So Micron back-to-back -back days, Got rejected off 90. That's going to be the big area going forward. Uh, Amazon still looks really, really good. Really good. It continues to build uh, above the 157.20s. But now, back-to-back -back days, it's stalled out at 158.50s, right? Back-to-back -back days. So, again, this is the big area. You can see back-to-back -back days stalled out of the 158 area. If they could get above that, you started seeing some 160 uh, weeklies come in. We started seeing some 175s. For February, and remember, Amazon's one of the very few that hasn't really gone uh, into orbit. So again, something to watch uh, on Amazon for the next uh, couple of days. Uh, Doc, you didn't go. Guys, I want to give you a perfect example, right? A really, really perfect example of what this market is. When was the last time, right? For what you guys have been trading for a long time. Number one, when was the last time IBM beat a quarter, right? I'll wait for that. 
But number two, what was the last time you saw IBM up $20, $25? That's the market we're in. That's the whole point of fund managers continue to chase performance because they don't want to be on the hook once again for 2024 like they did with 2023 sitting on the sidelines saying, well, this market can't go any higher. 54% later, yeah, it could. Uh, and that's the whole point. So IBM, beautiful move today. Beautiful, beautiful move today right at the open. Uh, they came out with earnings. They actually beat their numbers. Uh, 188.75 needs to build. Look at this move on IBM. Talk about a euphoric market, right? So here is the 194, right? One, uh, 180, what was the number again? I'm sorry. Uh, 188.75. So here is the 188.75. It got rejected there several times pre-market. Once it reclaimed it, I mean, this thing went up another 10. A really, really big move. Congratulations to all you guys uh, who caught IBM. Uh, Adobe, again, another another stock, another really, really good move. Uh, as we're talking right now, Intel is starting to get heavy again, starting to pull down a lot of the semis. Again, we'll, we'll definitely watch some semis for a potential back test tomorrow, if that's even possible. Uh, but 621, uh, Adobe needs to build. Here was Adobe, right? Took out the 621, took out this whole space here. 621 went all the way up to 627. Again, nice move, beautiful move on Adobe as well. Uh, Uber, right? Uber, a buyer came in, a really, really big buyer came in for the March 70 calls, 1.9 million. Again, the options market really sets fire to the equities market. When it does and the the the, the re buyers come in, uh, it sparks up the stock. And once it confirms on the daily chart, usually good things are going to happen. Uber, 6481 uh, needs to build. Here is Uber. And I still like it for tomorrow in case it starts reclaiming today's channel. Big breakout on Uber. Beautiful, beautiful move there as well. And I believe that is it, right? I believe, yeah. So we shorted some Tesla. Uh, we shorted some Tesla in the afternoon after, literally after its first spike. Uh, it went down to like 81, you know, 81, 80s. And then it was just taking too long. I got out of the position. Uh, it's pretty much, you know, hanging in there. Uh, more important, you know, I think Tesla on the radar for the next couple of days, is it possible it could have a day two uh, tomorrow? Absolutely, absolutely. But I, I definitely want to see today's shadow get confirmed. If it does, uh, maybe we'll get one more day of selling. So that's it, guys. Let me give you guys uh, some ideas uh, for tomorrow, so you can um, so you can uh, get prepared if it's you know if it's your thing. So Uber, uh, we still like. Uh, obviously, we want to see this thing uh, confirm above today's channels. Uh, Tesla, we talked about. Uh, I'm gonna watch the video just in case, just in case uh, Intel starts, uh, you know, starts taking down these semis. I want to watch this thing below the five-day moving average. I also want to watch uh, AMD uh, below today's channel as well. Again, you know, not the easiest trades in the world, but if they start losing the five-day, that's exactly uh, what I'm looking for. Uh, a smaller name, right? A smaller name. Um, I, I really don't know anything about this thing, but this thing looks pretty good. Uh, FUSN. If it starts getting above this channel here, can can wake up uh, as well. And Amazon, now, Amazon is definitely one to watch. Again, again, this is one of the very few that hasn't gone gonzo yet, right? So we're still watching the same level. It's been rejected now, back to back days. Let's see if tomorrow it could finally go through. And obviously Tesla, we watch every single day, but tomorrow, let's see if there's a day two uh, selling session there as well. That's it guys, that's it. A uh, good market, great action. Uh, bulls are in control. But again, guys, don't be naive. No matter how great the market appears to be, take off the rose-colored glasses. It means absolutely nothing uh, if you're sipping your own Kool-Aid. Stocks do go down. They do go down aggressively. And if you're not careful, if you are still chasing the stocks way above their daily pivots, you're going to have a very, very aggressive pull because those are the ones that get pulled first. Again, remember, if you're going to jump, right, jump out the first floor. Don't, don't jump off uh, the 21st floor where a lot of these stocks are currently trading. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great day. Have a great Friday. And I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care.